FLS Studio just dropped a massive update out of nowhere and we have so much to go through. So no silly intros, let's get right into it. The first change you see on Startup is this welcome page. If you've tried other DAWs like Pro Tools, Logic, Studio One and even Cubase I believe, you are familiar with this welcome page. Basically, you can pick whether you want to open a template from the built-in ones or the ones you created like mine. And on the left, you can pick any of the recent projects that you had saved. I'm going to open my default production template. Let's first go through the new plugins and get them out the way, shall we? We got a new synth plugin by the name of Kepler EXO, which is inspired by Juno 6 and Jupiter 8. It's got two envelopes, two LFOs, two oscillators, and you've got an arpeggiator down here, a bunch of effects to the bottom right, modulation matrix A and B, and by the look of it, it's gonna be a very, very good one. Let's go through a couple presets. I don't want to take too much time on each feature because it's gonna be a very, very long video otherwise. <laughs> couple arps, let's try some basses. I'm gonna turn off mono down here. Sounds pretty full and warm. Let's try a sub baser. If you're not in headphones or studio monitors, you might not hear it. A couple keys. Just improvising. It has a very dark, gritty sound. Most of the presets so far do. Let's try low strings. Hold the chord or something. Oh. An octave higher, maybe? For the last one, I want to hear this unsettling one. Bring the release down, because it's lasting ages. It is very unsettling, I'm not gonna lie. Okay, I'm gonna send this Kepler EXO to a mixer channel and we're gonna load those two new mixer effects that we have onto it and see what we can get. So the first one is low lifter. I'm gonna pick a bass preset that sub bass is a good example for this. This low lifter is a low frequency saturator. It's the first time I'm trying it out myself. Let's find out what we can do. If we hold a note, add some pre-gain, Change the slope. You can see that it's creating harmonics above. And you have a crossover point. You can change that. High gain and low gain. This pretty much does a job of a shelf. You can low cut the entire thing and also blend them in. Let's try the diffusion part. It creates some modulation inside the bass. The lower you set the depth, the more modulation you get. Pretty cool. What presets have we got? Uh, let's go for sub presence. So without it, with it very little difference, almost no difference. This is similar to a plugin like R-Bass that can bring out harmonics from your basses. The second new plugin for us to check out is called Spreader, which is very similar to Waves S1. It's just a widening plugin. So right now we're still using our sub bass. Let's turn the spread knob on and spread it out. This is fully mono. This is wide. And you can increase the separation to make it even wider. And you can put a crossover frequency point because I don't want to make 
frequencies below 250 wide we just want everything above this is a great great little knob in this plugin to be honest this knob is where most people go wrong you just widen your bases and you widen the entire thing and I've been saying this on my live streams for a long time now. If you want to widen your bases, make sure you keep everything below 250, 300 mono. Otherwise, you're going to have phase issues, you're going to lose that mono compatibility in the base, and just the tightness in your low end will go away. Right now, it's on 250, and if I play the same note, let's turn it off. massive difference and that's pretty much it for spreader it will work better on certain sounds like lead sounds and chord sounds but we tried it on a sub bass just for me to see how this crossover knob works just a reminder that on my youtube channel thursday nights 10 p.m uk time we have music reviews submissions are free i listen to your music provide you with feedback if it sounds wonderful we just pop to it and enjoy together so if you want a second opinion about your mix master or production you can come and get it from me and from the chat on thursday nights 10 pm uk time moving on to the next new feature something that a lot of you guys were excited about and it's in the piano roll it's the new generate chord progression shortcut for it is alt p it's giving you a welcome page too again there are some differences from the beta version that i can see already and it's my first time trying out this new one with you. I picked a chord sound that sounds like this inside Kepler. And we're gonna mess with this and see what we can get. So at the top you see this generate button, there is this gear icon beside it. You've got a dice icon which will randomize I believe. If I just turn it on and press generate, you get a random chord progression. So let's just hear what we have. A simple triad with one bass note. To change the key and the scale of the progression, right click here. And now let's say we want to go to D sharp minor melodic. By the way, if you left click, you have to open this panel again. But if you right click, you can keep editing. On the top right, you can change the chord count. If you want to put it on 6, 8 or 4, we're going to keep it on 4 for now and you can change the octave. Let's go one lower to C5. You can also change the length of each chord to a beat, two beats, a bar or two bars. We're gonna keep it on a bar for now. Down here, you can change the way the name of the chords are written, Roman numerals or the normal F minor, D sharp, whatever. Below that, you can go ahead and pick your chord progression. You can see there is a bunch with the mood written in front of it. So let's go for D sharp minor melodic romantic progression and see what we get. <laughs> Do you guys also feel like this is not the right sound for this? Let's go pick a piano sound. Okay, I picked an E piano sound. This should give us a better idea. Chord progression tool again. Even though I changed the instrument, it stayed on my previous settings. D sharp minor melodic. Down here we can choose another one. Let's go for nostalgic. Let's change the scale to minor natural. Below the progression, you can choose a rhythm too. Let's go for push-pull. Pretty cool. Change it to shuffle. There is a slider up here. You can go between conventional and adventurous. This will change the amount of uh, weird jazzy notes in the chord progression. So if we go towards conventional, it becomes more simple. If we go towards adventurous, it becomes more adventurous. You see what I mean? Let's put it down the middle. Below the rhythm section, you can type your progression. So if you want, let's say, the first into fifth into fourth into second there we go now we swap from presets tab to performance here we can choose how we want this chord progression to be played let's go for oscillate three hear this So 
that's one way of arpeggiating this. We could go to rhythm two. Each of these knobs that you turn to either way is gonna change the feel of this arp for you. Morphing was this on beat, off beat. Fair enough. When you're selecting arp, all these knobs are in regards to the arp. You can change to chop or to humanize and mess with those. Let's see if we can strum a little bit. Actually, because we're playing an arp, Set it to none. Now we can actually strum a little bit. That's beautiful. I like this. You can also go to chop and it gives you a chopping pattern like so. And then you got a tab called advanced let's see what this is about i actually want to go back to normal and then go to advanced see what happens okay right now nothing is changing i might be doing something wrong oh so this is the same this is very similar to the slider up top as i'm changing sampling temperature up top is changing all of them are related to that then okay i get it now you can change the inversion for each individual chord by dragging up or down to the top right of each chord here you can see we, we're changing the inversion. You can randomize the chord like this. If you press on the arrow, you can change the entire chord to whatever you want it to be. And you can take the bass note away by turning off this icon to the bottom right of each chord. To resize the chords, you can drag from here too. So if you want it to end here on the bar and for this one to start on the second bar and be as long, uh, or this one to start here and end on the fourth, you can literally fix your chord the way you want it to be. I ruined this first chord by the way. But that should give you a pretty good idea of what this is capable of. If you're just excited as I am about these new features and plugins, drop a like on the video and let me know in the comments which one is your favorite. Another addition to the piano roll is a script by the name of Note Repeater. I have way too many scripts but it should be somewhere... There it is, Note Repeater Sprinkler. This guy will basically add note repeats. You can see the bottom left where the velocities are that we're adding notes. One thing that confuses me, the first time I actually tried this, I was like, why am I not hearing anything? And I still am trying to figure that out. So let's see if we can do it together. Note spacing, let's put on one quarter. Now we can see the notes appear, but that's too many, way too many. Let's make them less. Let's actually change it to half notes. Cut overlaps, spacing, we can change the spacing a little bit. Duration of the notes, we can change. Velocity, let's turn them up, because I want to hear them. And you can actually change the filter mod X and mod Y. Okay, that was nice. You can create some sick stutter stuff with this. The next new feature is a macro. If we go to tools, macros we used to have switch all audio clips to resample and stretch now we can do it for any other stretching mode available in FL studio you might think what's the point of this but you're wrong before this was the only way we could change all audio clips within the project to resample or stretch and the use case for that was when you wanted to create tempo changes but you didn't want your audio files to go out of time or out of pitch you would set them to stretch and whatever tempo changes you made, the audio files would react to it. Resample was the opposite. Now you can set it to Stretch Pro or Auto as well. I don't see where Elastic and Special would come in handy in this scenario, but Auto and Stretch Pro could definitely take it up a notch. Moving on to two juicy features that we were waiting for for a long time. They may not be exactly how we asked for, but it's a good start. If we go to Options, general settings we have this new manage shortcuts you can now set your own shortcut for toggling browser plugin picker project picker and plugin database and three shortcuts for midi importing window however my favorite new feature is not this let me show you what it is say we have this atmospheric drone in the project before when you held shift left click and drag to copy a file 
it would be the same one. So this is the same as this one. The volume changes, anything that you do, mixer channel is the same, all the settings are the same. So if you wanted this one to be different to this one, you had to left click here and make it unique. Now we finally have a shortcut for it. So if I hold shift plus V and drag, it will automatically become unique. You can see it says number two in front of it. So shift plus V and drag. What if we have a bunch of things in the project and we want to make them all unique together? I'm going to put a couple patterns in there too. Highlight them all, control, shift and V. All of them are now unique. Thank you so much image line for this. Moving on, Edison just got more powerful. Click on the gear icon up here, and now you have Vocal Denoise Isolator. I'm gonna shorten the file so that it doesn't take a lot of our time. Control X, Control A, Delete, Control V. Gear icon again, Vocal Denoise Isolator. It's analyzing. There we have it. So here you can separate the vocals from everything else. If it's in the middle, it's the original thing that you had. So this is basically an extension of the stem separator inside Edison. Another improvement for Edison is the declipper. Clean up denoise or control U. I actually don't have anything off the top of my head that's clipping to show you this, but technically you turn it on, you set the threshold, you can see the green part behind, of where the threshold is. You first acquire noise profile, then you can preview, and when you're happy, you accept. If you look at the top left hint panel, that's not my ID name. Before it used to say MMV Music, now it says ATG1361. Basically, they made it anonymous, so content creators like me can be safer. Simple as that. Stock EQ has got more powerful, and according to FL Studio, this new HQ mode allows decramped filters without oversampling, which will avoid some unwanted uh, artifacts and noise. There are some big changes in regards to FL Cloud. Unfortunately, my subscription ended a few days ago and I haven't had the chance to resubscribe again just yet, but I can tell you what's changed and if you have it, you can try it for yourself. Firstly, AI mastering now has fine tuning effects. You can adjust the bass, mid and brightness and warmth, add high filter exciter or low filter exciter, multiband compression or widening. FL Cloud itself now has two tier subscriptions, Plus and Pro. With each tier of subscription, you get a number of plugins from FL Studio's partner companies like Melda Production, United Plugins, UVI, and Baby Audio. For Pro subscribers, plus 65 plugins and 16 mastering presets, and it's only £7 a month annually. For Plus users, it's 18 plugins, you still get the 16 preset for mastering, and it's only £5.59. Per month. These are the annual prices and here are the monthly prices. Mac OS version of FL Studio has improved massively. Now you have a top panel menu just like any other Mac OS compatible software. I think we've covered all the important stuff that are new in FL Studio 2024. They actually changed the name from 21 point something to 2024 and that's how it's going to be from now on. Each year, the version of FL Studio will go according to that year. Please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel if you found the video helpful. This is not going to be the last one. It wasn't the first one. And I have so much other cool stuff going on on my page. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.